Hey guys, I'm Mint's Guide and this is Irish Partisan. We have a little thing here uh, downstairs at the Alpha Hub in Nimiga Street and we're talking about costs of living here in Belarus. The uh, collaboration comes as an evolution of, uh, as an upgrade of Niall's version. I always want to call you Irish, is that okay? That's fine. Uh, Irish here uh, filmed a little clip about basic uh, living, basic costs of living, the chart, the, the chart of the cart, I guess. So today we're talking from the locals' perspective. I'm also relocating people to live in Belarus, and Irish is a guy who relocated to Belarus. He has his own vision, which may help us to, to, to get the, the big picture. Indeed. So as Andre mentioned, I made a video about living costs, but focusing more on expats, people uh, from abroad, from west, from the west, who want to relocate to Belarus. Yeah, it's mostly west and EU folks. So let's uh, make a portrait of the guy we are talking about, because obviously living costs are right badly, and it can be a one bedroom, three hundred bucks place by metro. Some of the places like Nile is staying at. Uh, it could be something trendy, designer, state-of-the-art shit. It could be 900 bucks a month. I'm now uh, dragging a customer across the city to check all these places, and they're horribly fashionable and extremely stylish guys. So never mind which which uh, cause brought you in here. Let's talk about uh, transportation, because after you've uh, got yourself a base, you need to get around the city more or less. So which are the most uh, frequent uh, ways of uh, getting around? Okay, so one of the most popular ways that people like to get around here in Minsk, locals and also expats as well, the metro. Uh, we also have privately owned Marshutka. These are the small minibuses. We also have buses, uh, trolley buses and trams, which are quite plentiful. And they cover pretty much all of Minsk. You can actually buy a card, a Minsk Metro card, monthly card, uh, all-inclusive and it will cost you about $25. It's not just metro, so ground transportation, I believe, or do they have them separate? Everything is, everything is included. You see, I'm a driver, so I'm a bit lost on these things. Uh, so you've got your rented place and you know how to get there. You push a couple of buttons on Yandex app and that's the best way if you were the newbie, so to speak. How do you buy all the things? Let's start with the uh, hardware. You need some furniture, you need some glasses in your kitchen. Where do you go? Okay, so in terms of furniture, there are some really, really good uh, furniture stores here in Minsk. You have uh, uh, Dom Mebel, uh, Ami Mebel. We had Yisk. <laughs> Isk, yes. So some really good places where you can buy good away. quality, yeah, good quality furniture. The Isk ran away, right? Did they run away? I think so. Run away, Jane. We'll check that and we'll put the link if they're still operating in town. But there's a load of furniture stores. They can drag it to your house uh, if you just push the buttons. My Canadian did that. Ray, hello, by the way. And uh, all, the, all the small supplies like uh, kitchen glasses, forks and everything you can find in any supermarket. Uh, there are several chains. Yeah. Speaking of survival, guys, let's talk about uh, shopping for food. There are obviously supermarkets. There is food market, Kamarovsky food market. And uh, obviously you probably don't want to buy from uh, Babushka on the street unless you really badly want certain type of pickles that you got used to after you were drunk. So, Irish, tell me, where do you normally shop for food? Okay, so I normally go, I, there are a number of places where I go to. A society uh, is a, a chain of uh, shops. We also have uh, Evropt, where I go, Bell Market, and on special occasions to Komarovsky Rinoch, the Komarovsky mar mar Market. All really, it's really good. All the wrong shops, uh, shops, chains to shop from, from a certain perspective. I never said that. So there's also a delivery service with Yevra Op, which I'm using. Uh, I would say I'm a fan. And I, when I find myself in the shop, it's kind of, you, you're looking unusual because normally I get the stuff as uh, two bags in the mm -hmm. early morning. The guy comes up, comes downstairs, the shopping is over, that's it. So. And yeah, look out for the sign, the Stavka, and that's like for uh, we'll delivery. Put, we'll put the links. Yeah. So uh, there's minimal budget for that. I guess in Minsk it's around 70 rubles that you have to buy uh, worth of stuff and they'll drag it to your door or add some uh, money and uh, the card can be smaller. So normally per week, let's say, an average guy like you, how much would you spend for food? Okay, so uh, 
It's kind of difficult because it all depends on the type of season. You tend to eat more in winter, obviously, you know, with, with the cold that we have at the moment. That's why I have these. Yes. And also to support the sound. Indeed. Okay. And um, also, well, well, I reckon you would, I don't know, about 60 or $70 a month approximately. Sorry, a week. A week. A week. Per week, week yes. yeah. So we're not sure how provincial guys survive with uh, that kind of salary, like 300 bucks per month and a couple of kids in the family, but somehow they know the secret. So, uh, and uh, the uh, option for vegetables and fruit is basically Komarovsky food market, which may yeah. or may not be cheaper in some case than the supermarket. Everybody does their own calculation. My strategy, I have my regular sellers at um, salespeople at uh, the Komarovsky food market. So it's like that expensive coffee place in America when they say hello and they look like they are happy to see you and the same shit, ex mm -hmm. exchange of all jokes, yeah. same through the last five years and I'm done with my shopping. So there you that's go. But I have to say the quality of food here in Belarus is actually quite high. And what about supply? Do you find the range of your stuff that you used to? Absolutely, yes. It's uh, the same back home. What about friends and friends of friends? Because in the group I heard a couple of requests like where do you get this jam or uh, blah 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 James and something I'm just uh, saying for example and a couple of guys were looking for some exquisite jams and other products but it doesn't happen often right this is where the these um, in famous babushkas come into into play uh, during the summertime you can actually buy produce on the street yes but that's not what we recommend unless we do a collaboration with a babushka sitting here don't buy from them because it's a uh, hygiene risks but generally sometimes I do that and if you're on the way from um, Mir Castle, for instance, you can stop by a huge stand where there's a bunch of them. Normally, standards there are quite high, but that's your risk. So before before we upgrade our chat to entertainment, let's uh, let's talk about drinks because there's food, and obviously we don't cover alcohol. Some of you don't drink, and some of you don't don't go to the expat meetings because of that, which is a shame because. Personally, I don't drink at the expat meetings. The next meeting is announced down below in the video description. So, Niall, you'll be the guy to talk beer as our beer expert. Okay, well, giving an example, last Saturday night I went out with a friend. Uh, we went to a place called the uh, Hooker Place. It's on um, Jakub Kolas Street. Hooker with double O. Yes, and that eight kind. And H at the end. Yeah. And uh, so for... I, we had, I had two beers and my friend had um, a beer and we both have some like light meals, meals together and it costs us 60 rubles okay. in total. And uh, depending on where you booze, it could be a bar, it could be some trendy place like the place we're meeting up, well, let's name it Malt and Hops. It's a fine place. I mean, the price is balanced with, with quality, some Western beers if somebody prefers those. And 0.5 of a local beer, there goes at 10 rubles, that's four bucks. Then there are foreign beers, which are obviously more expensive. The 0.3 to 0.5 varies from 10 rubles to 20 rubles, whereabouts. Mm. Yeah. Some Greenbergen and all, all these niceties of Western life, corrupt Western life. Let me recommend to you a very good Belarusian beer, Alivaria. Alivaria? Bella Zalotta, white gold, seven rubles. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, could be. But again, every beer has to have its admirer, so any recommendation has to be test drunk in this case. So uh, then there are stronger spirits, and everybody who is very much into booze, like vodka, they compliment Belarus because the stuff is really cheap. 0.75 bottle comes at $4, and there's never a shortage of that. We even have an anti-COVID vodka, 70% proof. So the factory came up with this trick soon after they came up with the first COVID version. Uh, so speaking of uh, expenses, which are more on the emergency side, uh, you have to have that one year coverage if you are here for a year, let's assume so. So Niall, you're buying one of those, there are two companies selling uh, local coverage for foreigners, mandatory thing. And it could be a foreign coverage, by the way, but you'd have to trans translate the policy for the migration office, maybe sometimes make an authorized translation. How much per year do you spend for that? Okay, so I go with uh, these, one of the state uh, insurance companies. This company is called Belgostrak, and uh, I pay approximately 170 euros a year for insurance, and that, that's, that fully covers me for emergency treatment. About two years ago, I broke my right hand, 
very painful. And I went straight to the hospital, the state hospital. I was seen within about 10 minutes by a doctor and it was free because I had the health insurance policy by Belgos track. Yeah, in my experience, my expats had their kids getting used to the local climate and local uh, local things. So they had their little things, fever and everything. The doctor rolled in. It was always a commercial service, so we didn't bother really to use the insurance and uh, do it through the official way with with, with paperwork. So the the thing the service always cost a few dollars on a doctor's visit and the families didn't mind on a certain a certain case with a canadian guy was he um, got uh, some kind of relaxing jab let's call it generally like this and uh, that only cost him the canadian insurance company spent more on calls back and forth rather than the jab itself in the private clinic now the private clinics have had a couple of shutdowns, but I guess a couple of them still operate, so there's no big deal about seeing a private dentist, private this and private that. And by the way, one of my peers runs a network of dental clinics. Maybe I should charge him for that. I'll leave the link down below. They speak some English and you know, smile to a client and stuff like that. So if you're into medical tourism and medical issues generally, they will help. Well, speaking of entertainment, entertainment, one cannot be glued to the telly all day these days. So, Niall, you'll be speaking for the two of us about the cost of entertainment because I tend to sleep at night time. So. Okay, in relation to entertainment, Minsk has a wide variety of uh, different choices. There is a place called Oktyabrska Street, October Street, where you can go in and, and indulge in the various activities sins, sins. yes the sins there of course many bars uh, some clubs there as well some good places some great places to eat minsk is a great place to eat it's a fantastic uh, choice of food you also have the rather well-known zubitskaya street as well lots of different bars and clubs there um so and you have upscale clubs uh, for example um like um, rich cat yeah, Rich Cat, that's on the uh, very Horuja Street. I read about it in the newspaper, I didn't go. Yes, okay. And you have uh, places like, for example, um, I think it's called Madison Club, something like that. Should be by Belarus Hotel or something. Yes, in around there, yes. It's quite, they're also quite really exclusive places where you will pay, one place will charge you about 200 euros for a table. So if you're bowling, it's the place to be. Well, but again, to find yourself entertainment, I'm not sure if you should take me literally or figuratively now, you really don't have to throw in around money because the uh, budget doesn't guarantee quality and it's your human nature and communication abilities that get you the uh, desired result in a way. Now, obviously, guys, we're not doing any nightlife uh, shoots. I mean, we're here together. I'm not sure about the Irish and what he does at nighttime. So, point is, uh, we're not going to talk any um, paid girl stories, but sometimes the local girlfriends uh, present a certain mind puzzle to the uh, Western friends or boyfriends, let's say, and they might ask uh, for a couple of hundred dollars. It's not exactly paid sex or something like this, but uh, they just ask for it. Like, honey, could you please give me a couple of hundred for, you know, for lipsticks and all, all that kind of stuff. That may happen. So be ready that a local little lady that you are kind of uh, into, it, she, she may cost you some money and you have to, we'll have to have that kind of budget. Or use your brain before you pick one and uh, make sure it's all about uh, higher feelings and you know, higher matters. Indeed. Than. Think up here, not down there. Although it's a bit hard when you get downstairs. So, uh, it just occurred to us after we talked to uh, paid girls that there's also state to be paid and suppose you have a property, it's uh, property tax and land rent. It wasn't charged this year but uh, la uh, property tax was. If you have an, uh, an apartment, I think in Minsk it's a 50 something ruble tax and it's in your taxpayer's cabinet or you may contact your local tax office to see how much you owe. Uh, this tax for the car, uh, very few people owe cars, own cars, so they, they would know how to deal with it. And it's all in the same cabinet. Point is, we're talking about one base unit. It's this much uh, this year, it's going to be higher next year, probably 34 rubles, but we'll only find out on the 1st or 2nd of January when the government likes to bring surprises on our table, which is still full of half-finished salads and uh, uh, destroyed drinks. 
So there's one, ba uh, one uh, basic unit or one basic value that they use to um, establish fines, uh, payments, fees of, of different kinds. And for instance, speeding by 10 kilometers by 11 kilometers per hour, suppose you do 71 instead of 60, which was on the sign, you have to pay one base unit as a fine. Uh, you don't want to do any drunken driving experiments, that's my kind recommendation, because then lawyers would cost you more and uh, kick out fi a fine and uh, everything will be a bit, a bit dramatic. So, um, apart from speeding this jaywalking, normally if they catch you, if they manage to converse with you, and it's a separate thing about conversing with the bureaucrats, normally I would recommend to speak no Russian at all. There's a highly, cha highly likelihood of being let go, because who wants to do the bullshit with translator and doing all by the book? Just play dumb tourist. Yes, American, smiling American tourist. No offense to Americans, it's just a good stereotype. And uh, the jaywalking fine may be half basic base unit. Essentially, you'll spend two hours learning some basic Russian at the police station rather than, or the traffic cop's car rather than uh, paying the money. It's not about paying the money, it's about the waste of your lifetime. And uh, what else? What other fines there may, might be? Parking is not a big deal really, but one of my friends got a ticket for one base unit. It's all about one base unit, it's all about 30 something rubles now, and it's nothing too damaging to the wallet compared to German or American fine systems. Uh, speaking of food, we also have to mention frocks and uh, trousers and everything. Uh, some people are pretty much into that H&M stuff. I think they shut down just now. Yep. And there's uh, Zara and there's a bunch of other things that I won't tell one from the other unless there's a label. But generally, Irish, what do you think you I, I should be more uh, used to Western brands? They exist here? Yes, they do indeed. As I said, I'm wearing a New Balance. It's a Western brand, so you can, you can find many different types of Western brands of clothing here, no problem trendy chap so I'm, I'm having some German made stuff so the um, point is that uh, what about the collection thing are they outdated is this the same year collection same year price wise they're a bit more expensive they're obviously they're, you have to be uh, wary of the fact that uh, Western brand clothing here in Belarus uh, is a bit more expensive here than it is back home those fellas who still stay here, they probably have to pay for their ruined PR in the West by selling frocks in the East. That's how it works. But uh, there's a bunch of people here who are frock oriented or brand oriented. We've seen uh, these rather horrible uh, reports about crowds, uh, how do you say, sweeping away, swiping away, swiping and sweeping away the last collections that were left in H&M and other guys who got closed. There was also reserved shop Polish yeah. one that shut down in Galleria, I think? That's or are they still running? I'm not sure, actually. I haven't, I haven't been out in Galleria in a while, so I'll, well, be, I'll we'll, be there this weekend, though. Maybe we'll launch a raid on Galleria and make a collab there and uh, have a fight with their security guys about filming their glamorous shit because the place seems to be closing shop by shop, but they also have announcements like this. Some new guys are coming in. They have pretty solid rent out there, so we'll just uh, take, a, take a walk and see what kind of shopping can be in the Galleria. Uh, now one is always asking what's best to buy for a uh, Belarusian as a present. It could be anything from those Belgian sweets and booze in the duty free, of course. Yeah. Uh, to what, what kind of wish list did you encounter? Well, I don't know if, if I'm, um, if my family is um, less refined, but when I go back home, um, I normally bring them back caviar. Chocolates. From here? From here, yes. Uh, caviar, by the way, is kind of on the cheap side compared to the West, I guess. But buying, try and buy caviar back home. Yeah. It's hideously expensive. Oh. That's why I buy it here. And I had a guy who brought the whole case of Zephyrs. It's a soft snack, uh, like marshmallow or something like this. Yeah. And uh, a couple of vodkas and a few other traditional things from Belarus. But speaking of uh, incoming souvenirs, gadgets and stuff like that, it's best to buy them in America. Yeah, absolutely. Buy uh, cam uh, if you're buying vlogging camera cameras, uh, phones, uh, mobile phones, etc. Girls uh, are terribly into phones. Yeah, apples, Apple, uh, and so on. Yeah, indeed. Buy them abroad. 
uh, much cheaper and you may want to lose the pack so as not to clear it with the customs because this way you'll be bringing the item for your own use and nobody will be asking you a stupid question. Although, verify that with the customs guys and uh, with your girlfriend, I guess they'll do their homework much swifter in this respect and then you can bring in the item without any 30% damage as customs fee. Speaking of customs, uh, you can bring in $10,000 undeclared in cash or the equivalent over that you just declare it but under hundred thousand you don't have to provide the source of income and essentially that would be the top complication smoking is costly in belarus you smoke no nope, i don't smoke neither i sometimes take a puff of a cigar you know trendy stuff but uh, smokes here go a dollar a pack or something like this depending on the type of cigarettes yeah. we don't really know much about that shit because it's not even tobacco in there so that's much much cheaper and the very very few western tourists that now even don't occur uh, monthly here they said that oh guys you have very cheap cigarettes this is so so wonderful yes the belarusian smugglers are very much in, in, in that line uh, so what's the conclusion yeah, so the conclusion is this is a very livable place. We have a wide variety of amenities uh, to suit yours and your family's needs if you're bringing your family here. Well, bringing in the family is not the best idea if you read one of those official travel websites. But again, we read those uh, things about arbitrary detentions of American tourists and then they'll be grilled and then they'll be hanged and everything and people from across the world ask us Canadians, Americans, all the, the, the bad guys, the bad country guys they ask us if the sanctions have any impact on the locals treating their ass here and we quite responsibly take um, declare hereby that uh, Canadians, Americans, British, whoever had any sanctions on Belarusians as persons, natural persons, do not have any ill effects over here Nope, none no, whatsoever. No, no strip search at the airport, no uh, confiscation of property, nobody got shot, grilled or anything like this, or even detained from what we know. And I guess if anybody had been, the local, the Western newspapers would have been very loud about this. So balance the need to travel here, the temptation, so to speak, and the uh, reasonable uh, fear of whatever geopolitical issues happen around. We obviously can't deny there's some wrong stuff happening outside there but we don't run it so we can't stop it unfortunately we can only recommend you what to do about getting here and about getting around here pretty much so irish thanks for the collab we'll see each other later unless the new version of covid swipes us all from the face of the earth you mean mexican beer whatever shit. stay safe and we'll see you later cheers from minsk <laughs>